Welcome to the Cat Bear Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin. Sleeves. Oh my goodness. If you have taken apart a shirt, you know what in the world with the sleeves. So in today's video, I want to show you how much fabric is in a sleeve and give you some ideas for how to cut them to get the most fabric that you can. And I have a lot to say about it. So stay with me. So shirts are my thing, you may have gathered. And I love working with them. I love the fabric, I love the prints, I love the colors, I love almost everything about them. But sleeves are tricky. And if you have been quilting for a while, you may have gotten used to getting a fabric bundle or picking up um, fat quarters at your local quilt store. And they are great. I mean, and they are so, it's like candy. <laughs> at the fabric store, I talk about this all the time, um, when you get to the register and it's like, you just see every fat quarter that you want. So here's fat quarter that I have that I picked up exactly that way. And oh my goodness, it's just like a blank canvas. It's so great. You can just put your ruler down. You know, you need a bunch of six inch squares and just cut right through it. And then put your ruler the other way and then cut right through it. Easy peasy. Shirts, not as much. So if you have a shirt, you've got a beautiful shirt back, two fronts and two sleeves, and then odds and ends. So yokes and collars and cuffs. If you're a memory quilt maker, you're already familiar. Or if you've been wanting to use shirts or have started using shirts, you might be inclined when you read a pattern that calls for a fat quarter to reach for this which is a glorious shirt back. Except for the hem and the underarms, it really looks just a lot like a fat quarter. And let me just show you why it looks that way. Because it is, <laughs> it is that way. So I have to tell you in prepping for this video, I ironed all my fabrics, the fat quarter, and actually trimmed it to be the right size because it wasn't actually 18 by 22. And I ironed my shirt and I laid it out just like this and I went, oh. <laughs> I have been working with shirts and quilts for a few years now. Every time I do this, I am just blown away by how much fabric there is in a shirt. Look, I mean, there's... This is six inches wide and nearly 22 inches long of extra fabric. Plus here, now this is not so great. There's not a lot here, but my goodness, that is amazing. Okay, I digress. That's gonna be my next hashtag, I digress. Um, <laughs> so back to the original, which is you may be reaching for the shirt back to get your fat quarter out of it. And that would make a lot of sense. But I'm here to tell you there is more fabric in a sleeve than you think. Sometimes it's, I would never say easier to use it, but you can save your shirt backs and fronts for when you need a project with a lot of fabric. And if you'll remember, a shirt of almost any size uh, will give you almost a yard of fabric, except for just the smallest size. So medium and up, a yard or more of fabric. An XXL is like a yard and a third. So there's a lot of fabric there. And if you want to save it up for a project that requires more than a fat quarter, you might be inclined to do so. So let me get my shirt sleeve. Let's talk about it. So I have my fat quarter laid out. I want you to see just at a, at a glimpse, at a glance. Have you ever put those two words together and you get at a glimpse? <laughs> At a, mm, now I'm not going to be able to say it right. So, wow, there's a, I mean, already you go. Now, obviously, <laughs> it's not the size, but there's a lot here. There's a lot of fabric here. Just as an aside, 
in my first break down your shirt video, I talked about lopping this little part off. I must say the word lopping. I think I said it in the last video as well, instead of cutting. You might be inclined to cut this off, but I want to show you why maybe you want to hold on to it. So before we go any further, this is a two and a half inch binding strip from a shirt. And I want to just lay this down and let you see this. So right there, that little section gives you, so if you're doing a pattern with two and a half inch squares, one, two, nearly three. But if you were wanting to cut binding from a shirt, you can do that just like this and get quite a bit of binding out of it or two and a half inch strips, however you want to think of that. So really, when you go to cut your shirt sleeves, it's like a whole approach. It's an approach. It's a mindset. And it's one that you have to really adjust with not only the size of your sleeve, but what sort of pieces you're wanting to get out of them. And that's what I'm here to tell you about today and show you is there's more fabric here than you think. And if you approach it with your pattern in mind, you can get so many pieces out of it. All right. I like a good visual. <laughs> I'm a visual learner so much so that Oh my goodness, it's hard for me sometimes when I read a pattern and it just says subcut 10 inch strips into five by two. I'm like, no, no. Can you give me the picture? So I want to give you the picture. This is a 12 by 12 inch cardstock square because in a former life, a few years ago, I used to do paper craft. And so I have a ton of fabric. I mean, a ton of paper. So I'm going to lay this down neatly right here on my sleeve. Now, I hope if you have not already had this experience, you're like, whoa, it does not look, the sleeve laid out on, your, on my cutting table does not look like it would support a 12 inch square. I'm working on two new projects right now. And one of them uh, starts with a, four at a time, four patch. And I'm using 10 inch squares to accomplish said four patch, four at a time, four patch. And I thought, well, I'll just start with the sleeves and see if I can get, and, and kind of like, oh, I'm probably, I mean, this is 12 by 12. So in my two sleeves, I've got two 10 inch square pieces, which just that alone is kind of like, what? <laughs> really? So there's more fabric in the main part of the sleeve than first meets the eye. So I just want to put that out there. And if you are going to cut large squares, which time, put a pin in that. A lot of you that do use shirts, I have heard, you have commented, I love it, um, that you'll go on when you break your shirt down and cut your pieces into the largest pieces you can. So like cut this into, for example, a 12 by 12 square and the rest, like maybe this is a five inch square and the rest goes to your scrap pile, which if you want to do that, that's great. And certainly, you know, whatever order works for you is fantastic. But I want to throw out there that sometimes if you do that, you may be shorting yourself some fabric for a project that perhaps doesn't require a 10 inch square or a 12 inch square. So that's was just, that's kind of the moral of that. And so we'll take the, we'll go back to where our pin is. And I want to show you using my pattern pieces for my second project that I'm working on right now, um, how you could reconsider using your sleeve. So I mentioned that I'm starting a baby quilt with the pattern Geo Gems. And the gem piece of the Geo Gems uses uh, two, it's two blocks per color. And I think it's a fat quarter per, maybe a fat quarter per two. And Emily Dennis does a great job of laying out those pattern pieces visually on a fat quarter. Well, 
I don't have a fat quarter. I'm using all shirts, including the background. So what I did, and that's, I have a day off today, part-time quilter, and I'm going to make <laughs> my sing song. Oh, that's ridiculous. Um, and so I'm going to be cutting pieces today because I really, I really want to get them all cut so that I can get rolling on it. And so I've already got some cut and I'm going to use those pieces to show you maybe your sleeves are a diamond in the rough. So that's where we're going. Now, if I had gone on and cut my square, like, you know, put the square down and cut just the square out of the middle so that I could get my pieces. And by the way, I'm not going to say the dimensions of the piece because I feel like that's not fair to the quilt pattern designer. Um, so if you want to get the pattern, it's Geo Gems by Quilty Love. Um, but that's why I just am using my pattern pieces. And you can infer that if you have pieces smaller than this or bigger, how to do that. So if I had cut a square, if I had cut that 12 inch square, this is what would, how many of these pieces I would get out of it. And there's nothing wrong with this. And obviously I still have a lot of space and you can probably already figure out for yourself that there is another one of these that will fit right here. And you go, okay, well that's, that's not bad, that's great. But I want to show you that if you can think outside the box, and this is what I very, very often do with shirts, those curve pieces and those corner pieces actually offer more square footage than you think. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these straight to the edge so that we're getting as much of that, using as much of this landscape as possible. And I have just slid this piece up into that curve to try and redeem that space. And so here's our five that we just had, if we had cut the square, but look. Now we've got and actually, if I will scooch, scooch this just a little bit more. I think, Paula, I think I grabbed the wrong shirt. <laughs> so I turned my shirt over because this is the way I'm used to it. <laughs> Quirky. I just, it's weird. I just have to see it this way. Okay. <laughs> Same sleeve. This is shimmied this way up into the curve. And look, I've got another whole piece out of that. Now, I want to stop a second and say, if you are using a pattern that also has additional smaller pieces from that main piece of fabric, this is a great time to see how much you can get out of it because it may affect how you cut your fabric at this point. So you'll notice that I'm getting a surprising amount of, ad <laughs> of additional pieces out of this. And again, I say, if you don't cut that, le that little leg off. So it just so happens that my pattern calls for four of these and four of these in the solid color for one block. And you can see, not only do I get all of the one block, I'm making headway on the next block as well. And if this had not fit in right here, and I had put these here, then when I go to cut, 
I would cut this line first, but I wouldn't cut this line because it would cut right through that space. It just so happens that they will also fit here, which is why I moved them. Because I actually did this as a trial run before I sat down to talk to you about it. So instead of thinking in a grid with squares, it's like you have to think of what are the long cuts that I can make that I can get the most fabric out of. So I'm going to get my ruler and show you. So if I go to cut this, I'm going to cut right down that line. I'm going to cut down this line and I'm going to cut down this line. And then I go back and that's when we get that sub cut <laughs> scenario where cut this, then this. But if I had just cut in a grid straight across it, I'd be missing out on an opportunity to get all these pieces in. And I learned that the hard way. Um, I, I originally, when I first started sewing with <laughs> shirts, I would use up all my shirt back. And then if I wanted, if I needed more pieces, I would cut like this and then I would end up and go, Oh, wait, what, what do I do? Which in this case, it actually does work right here. But sometimes it won't quite fit. And if I had cut across one of these lines, then I can't squeeze that extra piece in. So you don't have to make a template of your pattern pieces. But my thought here is that I think it's helpful to realize that this curved piece has additional fabric and this little leg piece has additional fabric. Now I want to show you on this sleeve, I think is from an extra large, it might be a large, but just like the actual shirts themselves, the leaves are the leaves. <laughs> the sleeves are much larger as you go up sizes and they are different for different shape shirts. So let me show you that and uh, I'll be right back. Before I go on to the different sleeve sizes, if you were wondering what the block looks like, here it is. And you can see those pink pieces that I've used. I've already done my orange. I'm working toward my, my purpley plummy. And so this is, this is what I'm working on. I'm very excited about it. Anyway, I digress. Hashtag I digress. So this is the white shirt that I'm using. One of the white shirts. I found two of two identical shirts at the thrift store for $3.99 and they were double XL. And so you bet your sweet bippy that I bought them. So this is one of the sleeves. It is, again, it's double XL. And let me show you the difference here and what I'm working with for my Geo Gems, the gems versus the background. So my goodness, a lot more fabric. Now that doesn't look like a lot more until I take my handy dandy 12 inch square and you see just how much is left around the whole thing. And then another fabric that I'm using is this really pretty kind of magenta fuchsia red violet uh, gingham, which this is one of my early ones. You can tell because I cut that piece off and I'm wishing I hadn't. But look how much longer that is. Do you see that? So here's the probably extra large. Here's the extra large. Here's the XXL. And then, whoa, what's happening here? But look how much narrower it is. So this is probably a tall. This is probably a, maybe even a large, medium or large men's shirt. But it's for someone who has, you know, the big and tall. Well, this is not big, but they're tall. And so they need longer sleeves. And again, let's do our visual. So still fits, but you can see it's much tighter than it was on that purple shirt because it's a narrower sleeve. Obviously, I'm going to approach cutting the pieces out of this gingham shirt differently because it's not the same, you know, it's not the same dimensions. Now, I'm still going to do my same thing where I 
lay my pieces out to figure out how I can get the very most out of it because I'm going to need, I'm going to need four of those. I'm going to need two of these blocks, not shirt sleeves <laughs> to make it work. So again, I have learned that if I will stick a piece up in that curve part, I can see that's a good place to start to see how much I can get out of it. Sometimes it's not as much as you would think. And sometimes I can get more by doing it this way and, and kind of reclaiming the side of the shirt, if that, if you will. So sometimes there's just more there and you just kind of have to play with it, which is maybe I'm just nerdy, but I actually really enjoy this part. Like, gosh, how much can I get out of this shirt? You know, if I, if I put it up here now, I won't sit here and play with it like Tetris all day. Um, at some point I'll go, good enough. And especially if I have a whole shirt of it, um, then I'll, you know, oh, I've, I've got enough fabric <laughs> and I'll run through it and not spend as, as much time or energy. And a lot of times it's, they're similar, but just the configuration. So sometimes it's easier to do it this way and just cut those long straight lines than it is to kind of do the Tetris thing that I was just doing. But you never know until you kind of work with it, which is why part of the reason why I use the shirt sleeve in the beginning. I mine these shirts for all these sleeves for all they're worth and then get them out of the way. And then what I'm left with is two shirt fronts and a very large shirt back that I can save up for if I wanna do a project with shirts that requires much more fabric. So those are some considerations that I think will be helpful to you as you go into using shirts for quilting. I'm not gonna actually show the physical cutting of the fabric um, on today's video. I'm not going to demo that for you, mostly because I think if you cut any fabric, you can probably figure that part out. So I hope this has been encouraging and helpful <laughs> for you about using your sleeves and redeeming some of the, that fabric back for your quilt projects. So have an open mind, play around with the layout, actually get your cutter out and cut the fabric up and use it in your next quilting project. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thank you so much for watching.